Welcome back to the 2021 Seattle, uh, Seattle Film Summit. We are here with guest Raymond Power. Raymond is from Tacoma, where he uh, saw relief in gangs and violence after a childhood of adversity. But through hard work and determination, Raymond found redemption in family, work, and education. Notably, Power has received national recognition and numerous scholastic awards, including the 2019 Resident Dream Scholar, 2020 NAEOP Scholastic Achievement, and the 2016 Transforming Lives Award. Power is now a full-time actor, appearing in over 30 projects, most recently Steven Soderbergh's HBO Max crime thil- thriller, Kimmy. Raymond is a fierce believer in always learning, and that with hard work and determination, you can accomplish anything. Raymond, thank you so much for joining us, yeah, for taking some time. Quite a resume. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> big time. And, and grew up just uh, down the road, really, yeah. in Tacoma. So yes. a local boy like uh, like myself. Greg's a transplant, but we're, <laughs> yeah, we're, well, we're, we're, we're going to call him a Northwesterner. Yeah, think, trying to strip fact, the though. East Coast off of him. Yeah, yeah, so. A little bit at a time. <laughs> so, Raymond, uh, look, first of all, what brought you to the uh, summit today? Uh, so this is actually my second year uh, being here in person. First was 2019, where I discussed um i had a we had a table read on a script that we wrote that we were trying to bring to network or to a streaming service and we've gone very far with it and we're back right. today on another panel speaking about it how far it's progressed and how many opportunities we've garnered okay. from it and uh the panel today is adapting real life stories for tv and film and then my experiences on bringing it to tv and film so oh, great it's been cool so, uh, in your bio, mentioned a little bit, uh, came from a challenging background. Yes. What was it that first drew you to the arts, and what age did you, uh, okay, did you so first get involved? Young, we I always had a camera in my hand. We were making films in our backyard, music videos. Always, always had a passion for it. In middle school, I did plays, but I got in trouble and wasn't able to do them. I wrote plays, but then at some point in my life, I. It was adversity, drugs, stuff like that at home with my parents, and I joined a gang and all that kind of disappeared. It didn't seem like an avenue, and there was obviously nowhere to do that kind of thing in my neighborhood. So um, I went back to college uh, after changing my life and took an acting class on a whim, and I I met uh, screenwriter Jonathan Kesey, got a scholarship to go to his class at the Seattle Film School, and then it's the rest is history. Well, I guess over so. 30 projects have a TV series based on my life that's probably going to be, I can't say too much, but it's it's going good, so it's been amazing. Wow, that's great. So having a, a, a challenging childhood and, and young adult experience, how has that helped your um, fueling your um, ambition, your... You know, how, how has that impacted mm-hmm. in how you've driven your career? In forming your characters yeah. that you play, it's, things like that. I honestly wouldn't change it. There was a lot that went down, and it was sad, and it hurts. and But um, it's made me who I am today, and I have five kids, so I can teach them that not to do those things. They see me follow my dreams on TV and commercials, on print, and it just it's one more... Uh, and I also go into at-risk youth, uh, children's prisons, and I teach classes. I was actually able to bring the creators of Leap there, and we were able to have a class with the children there. So it, it fuels me, it motivates me, and it also lets me share my story with other individuals that have the same past as me and kind of inspire them that there is another way, that we're trying to bring more arts and more... There, there's so many different avenues that you can take instead of just thinking that you're stuck in one way. Um, in my neighborhood, it was either one or two things you could do. If if not, you're stuck in the streets, you're selling drugs, you're being bad. But there's so many more options, and the arts is one of them. So it's, it's, and the character wise, I mean, I can pull from that trauma, which right. is not always good, but I mean, yeah. it's, it just, it helps me warp into character, and I can bring any emotion needed. So it's, wow. I wouldn't change it for the world. Yeah. We just spoke with a, a few of the folks from um, YP Communities and uh, Two Access. Mm-hmm. Uh, Access, Access Two. two. I'm sorry. Access Two, yeah. Uh, about connecting people that would nor- not normally, you know, some underprivileged folks who wouldn't normally have access to jobs and um, in, in any um, in, in industry, um, do you find that you're able to kind of bridge some of those gaps that people wouldn't normally have? And it's kind of what you're, what you're yeah. speaking about, right? People wouldn't, nor- wouldn't normally have access to the arts mm-hmm. that you're able to connect them and that's gonna, and when you do, it's got to make you feel pretty good that you can have that kind of influence. Yeah, so that's uh, just it, just like my show. So we brought real people from our neighborhoods, and it's based on my neighborhood, and I was able to bring 
uh, young people and people that I grew up with in behind and in front of the camera, giving them opportunities oh, and showing them different skill sets. And now some of them are want to be filmmakers and they're in school and they're changing their life because they were able to come with me on a real Hollywood set with Hollywood directors and writers and see, well, this is in my grasp. This is actually possible. And I think that's what it takes sometimes to actually show people that it's not just a dream, that it's there. We're giving access, so take it and let's let's do it. So. Yeah, we talk a lot about representation up on the screen. Yes. But this is even taking that a step further. Yes. And you're actually showing people um, th in a hands-on way that they can be involved yes. in these things. Yeah, I think that's very important. That's wonderful. Yeah. One, one question that I have for you. Um, there are obviously shows, uh, uh, streaming, uh, feature films made about the gang life, yeah. or uh, some people say glorifying crime, mm. glorifying uh, gangs, things like that. Uh, the anti-hero. Americans love an anti-hero. True. But it must also, especially for someone who grew up in that type of an environment, it must be very important to tell those stories at all. Uh, th those stories need to be told. Yes. Um, is, is that been your experience that, that it, rather than glorifying something, it's showing the way people truly live and that there can be ways out? Yes, I think, it's, I think it is important to show. It's not always glorifying, but it's showing the reality. And a lot right, of people like reality. to shut that reality off and act like it doesn't exist, but it's there. And mm -hmm. that's something that some people live with daily, and that's their everyday life. So yeah. it's not necessarily glorifying. It's showing exactly what's going on in that neighborhood. And maybe it'll spark somebody to say, hey, maybe we can change that or maybe we can help in some way. So um, build empathy, Yeah, build empathy yeah. and show what's really going on, not just kind of sweeping it under the rug, you know, because right. our, the show, our show uh, takes it shows homelessness. It shows gangs. It shows prison. It shows a reality of everything that's going on every day. And what we're doing is we're trying to humanize those people. So when you see somebody, you're like, oh, that. I, I understand a little bit, so I can talk to this person. I don't just shun them because mm -hmm. they're living on the street. You bring a humanity to them. For sure, yeah. and, and because there's such a stigma against these uh, the people, people that have to worry about uh, clean water. Yeah. People mm -hmm. have to worry about you know where their next meal is coming from, and to, I, I think that's great to humanize them, and maybe the people that look at them as if they're not working hard enough mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. whatever the, the they might think to realize the fallacy in that argument. Yeah, it's so yeah. true. Big time. So what's next for you? Now, are you are you still local? Uh, yes, I'm okay. in, uh, I primarily work out of Seattle, but I travel and work. Um, I have a ton of projects in the works. I have three features I'm shooting the rest of this year, like five short films. I just got off a set for <laughs> six days on an overnight shoot so I'm a little tired <laughs> I'm also producing now I'm producing a, a commercial with a, a director Josh Taft he's a pretty big director he started the grunge movement uh, with Pearl Jam mm -hmm. and all of them mm -hmm. back in the day uh, so we we are we're on a team and we're producing a commercial for a big brand right now so besides acting it's producing and writing and just all in you know trying to bring opportunities to individuals that wouldn't necessarily have it it's during the opening ceremonies, uh, Tom Skerritt talked about it and some of the other politicians about a call to action to um, uplift Seattle as mm -hmm. the place to, or and Seattle in the vicinity, as the place to make movies. Can you talk about what your experience is as far as working in Seattle and, and what the area's been like for filmmaking? Seattle's amazing. I've worked in other, I've worked in L.A. and stuff, but I love Seattle. Like, we had the opportunity to take our show to L.A. and hand it off but we want to keep it in Seattle we want to show that this is we're thriving here there's talented individuals that can do everything they can do anywhere else so we want to bring film there is film in Seattle we just want to make it bigger and we want to make this a staple because I was thinking about moving to LA but I want to stay here and help grow this community because this is where I'm from this is my home and there's so many talented individuals here so keep film in Seattle for sure <laughs> right yeah on. and we were talking about the fact from a from a landscape perspective beautiful you've got the yeah. city you've got the water you've got the desert woods. You go, yeah you go over yeah. the mountains you've got the we desert we have everything the yeah. rainforest it's it's like a one-stop shop for anything yeah, you need. Yeah, exactly. So. Why, why go anywhere else? Yeah. 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 Well, what's the best way to keep up with all of your projects? Uh, I'm on your IMDb page right now, but yes. uh, I assume social media, that type of yes, thing. Yes, so yeah. I'm on Instagram at the Raymond Power. I'm also on Facebook, Raymond Power. Um, our, my project, Shelter Project. Dot, um, 
www.pitchdeck.co. You can check us out there. It's basically like a pitch deck, also a website. And um, yeah, uh, yeah, g- feel free to reach out. I'm always willing to collaborate or just have a discussion. So well, that's great. Well, thanks for your time today, Raymond. It's a pleasure Thank meeting you. you. Good luck on the panels this afternoon. We'll do our best okay. to get in there and Thank listen you. to those. Definitely. And, uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of the summit. Yeah. Thank you. It's been All great. Right. Good to meet you. you. Thanks. Definitely. All right.